Hello everyone, this is Shokura Zohe Gyoku aka Chikomen and welcome back to our last play of Teachers with Love and Passion. In the last day too, we finished the friendship route of Mr. Ray Fox, I think. And now we will try our best to make any changes and the choices that we made and find out if there's actually a romantic route because I have a high inkling suspicion that there is and I'm going to find it because a lot of questions unanswered. So let's go! Okay, I'm going to load back this one and try other options like this one because the last time I chose, I hope it doesn't. So this time we try the Robbly and see what does the options make things different because I felt like the last ending wasn't... There's the one ending over that. So the last ending was a uh, friendship, maybe. Feels like a friendship ending. So let's try this. So the context of this is... Something. Anyway, let's continue. Properly. Properly. That was fast. Hmm. I wish you had hesitated a bit. That wouldn't make things easier. Hmm. As long as we leave, there will always be constant change. But we can at least expect it to go for the best. Oh, uh, we're looking at the bright side. Yeah. Mm. I just hope I don't need to say goodbye to you. Uh, this time, my heart talked louder, but it didn't make me nervous. That's how I feel. And that's what I want him to know. Just then, it occurred to me that I have been here only talking about my feelings. Okay. Uh, the last time we go for go out for desserts, now we go to try to drive home. I think maybe we should just drive home. Mine or yours? Oh my god, Mr. Ray! No! Naughty, naughty, Mr. Ray! That's not what I mean. I just think it would be better not to overdo it on a first date. Hmm. Ray turns his face in my direction, eyes startled and lips half open. What? Is that so weird? I didn't say it would be a date. His voice sounds weak, saying each word slowly as if he wants to make sure he didn't get it wrong. I feel my heart take a leap and stop for a few moments. And you said first date doesn't mean please stop i can't embarrass myself more than this ray is laughing loudly while i think if i should jump out of the car or pretend to pass out i can't believe i assume it so quickly mr fox would tease me for the rest of my days now <laughs> it sounds good Really good. I was planning to ask you on a date, but I didn't know how you would react. Eh? I think now I have the green card to do it someday. But honestly, I'm surprised you answered it so well. I was expecting you to be more embarrassed about it. I am, but it doesn't mean I wouldn't like to do it. I wanted to show him that I was serious, but that also made me blush. My voice cracks to a new fell at the end of the sentence. Ray laughs under his breath, shaking his head slightly. You know exactly how to surprise me, Miss Fine. That's another thing I like about you. Hey, Hannah. I just thought about another thing we could do. What? Ooh, ooh. what, 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 what? Oh. CG, CG. Before I can turn, he leans over me. 
My body reacts faster than my brain. In an attempt to put space between us, I pull back, only to trap myself in my seat. Ray stares into my eyes from above. All my thoughts vanish, and the air becomes too thick to breathe. Look, oh, so inside this car for the oh night. Oh my, oh dear. Oh my, just to go. No notion of time or space or anything at all. Just you, me, and. He stops. I see saliva shoot Kodawa's throat slowly. Oh my god. His slender fingers glide down the door, stopping inches away from my arm. This is not another stupid tease. This is lurch and desire. Oh my, spicy! I know it's because I'm feeling the same. A mixture of heat and cold run through my veins. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Would that be too much? Mm, I wonder, but she's guy, you shouldn't do that in a car. At least go somewhere, get a room or something. <laughs> oh no. There is only one way to know. Also, Mr. Ray's hair is pretty, really pretty. I like it. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. <laughs> My words come out in a whisper, but it sounds loud enough to wake his senses. I watch his eyes widen slightly and his bubble narrow. The air around us becomes intoxicated and hot. Hard to breathe, hard to think, and hard to be rational. He leans over, and I close my eyes. Kid? 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 Oh. I'm waiting for the soft, wet touch on my lips, but it doesn't happen. Instead, I feel his forehead touching mine and the door unlocking on my side. Maybe next time. Dang, too bad. I don't dare to open my eyes because I don't want to see him looking tenderly at me. Not now when my feelings are overflowing. And I know what I want. Ray doesn't tell me to leave. I don't want to leave either. But if I don't do it now, I feel I will be only pushing the limits and extending the pain. Wrapping my back, I open the door, sliding my body away from him. Thank you for the ride. Hmm. Holding my body, I watch the car leaving. For the first time, there is no smile on my face after spending time with him. This is frustrating. I don't understand why he was started if he didn't intend to finish it. Did he want a confirmation from me? Well, now he has it, and I have it too. Uh, I like him. Wrapping my arms, I bite my lip, hearing my voice say it for the first time. I thought coming to terms with it would help calm my heart, but in reality, it's only making everything worse. What am I going to do when I see him tomorrow? So what if we are attracted to each other? What does it mean? What is the next step? Is it even love, or are we just seeking affection? This is the type of question that has been keeping me up all night lately, and I haven't found time to look for the answer. I don't want to lose him to my insecurity. With my head wrapped in so many thoughts, I don't pay enough attention to where I'm heading. Those boxes were for someone else, but I throw it away. Eh? The white eyes on my face make it clear that his answer hasn't hadn't crossed my mind, not even once. He says nothing about my reaction, 
not even to tease me. Instead, he watches me carefully, giving us time to understand. Slowly, the surprise begins to dissolve, giving space for my thoughts to analyze it better. When I saw the man on his back, all I could think about was him and why he was using that. Just because Bree walks along around school doesn't mean he is like that in his personal life too. I didn't consider the other options, and now I feel bad, both for my assumptions and because I thought I knew him enough. However, I don't give myself time to be sad. This realization raises another question. Does it mean someone is sick? Then why did he throw it away? Was their medicine not enough, or was it the other way around? I stared at him motionless, but my expression keeps changing. Um, you, you are smirking, sir. After a long time of silence, Ray smiled, crossing his arms in front of me. Are you going to ask me about it, or will you try to guess? The question is followed by a short laugh, enough to make me turn away with red cheese and a flustered heart. I got so caught up in my thoughts I forgot we are still talking. Ray is neither denying me answers or is bothered by the questions, yet I feel shy to talk about it now. Perhaps I just realized how personal this is, and maybe, just maybe, I'm scared of hearing him saying there's another person in his life. He notices my hesitation, but instead of giving up on it, he comes closer, taking a deep breath. When did you find out about it? He is changing the route, but still keeping us on topic. It's a clever way to make me talk because I feel less anxious now. That night when Peter was here. That long? Why didn't you ask about it earlier? It wasn't my business. Uh, and I thought you would be uncomfortable with me. And it would be the second time I was intentionally spying on you. For a moment, he only looks at me like I've just said the most absurd thing he's ever heard. After what seems to be a minute, he laughs. It starts as a giggle, but slowly it gets longer and more disbelieving. What's so funny? You. I can't believe that's what you were worried about. If any other teacher saw it, they would question me right away and report me to Tillman. But of course, you will be worried about me. He says that in a sarcastic tone, but his eyes are looking at me tenderly. I avert my eyes feeling a bit guilty and a bit shy. I thought you were sick. That's why I asked Thomas about your health. I uh, see. When he told you I was fine, you didn't consider it strange of me. Yes. And yet, you didn't ask me. Because I trust you. Uh, ooh, 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 the flash, oh, the flash. Ooh. I spoke out loud because it is what my heart is asking me to do. I didn't mean to scare him, but it happened anyway. His face turns red with surprise. And I could see his jaw tensing up. I'm embarrassed again, but it won't stop me from speaking my mind. Yes, yes. Speak your mind, girl. Speak your mind. I said it already. You are the most caring person I know. There was no reason to be worried about you. And now that I know you were doing it for someone else, I know I was right to believe this feeling. My words take a while to reach his heart, but when it arrives, I see in his face it didn't cause the effect I was aiming for. Ray smiles bitterly, casting his eyes down. 
The story is deeper than that. He whispers, taking a deep breath. That's the sign telling me to wait. Suddenly, he grunts, scratching the back of his neck angrily. God, I didn't want to talk about it now. I was planning to ask you out first. Ooh, ooh, wait, wait, wait. What is that? What is that you're planning to ask in her out? Ooh. What? Yeah, that's why I came here. He speaks slowly, surprised and annoyed with himself. His words quickly split my thoughts in two. Once I am surprised to see his reaction with a frustrated plan, while the other is having a swirl of feelings trying to figure out what is happening. My white eyes and blushing cheeks are enough to make him tease me. He is too worried about what to do now. I realized I don't want to just go out with you. I want more. But I couldn't do that if I keep doing what I am doing. He lets out a long breath. Somehow, it looks like he is extremely tired of hearing himself saying that. Tired of doing whatever he is doing. His eyes find my direction. What seems to disturb his mind is now hiding behind more important things. I still see the tiredness and break on his face. But now I also see the desire to change something. It's a long story, but I'm willing to share it with you. So, want to come to my greenhouse tomorrow? It will give me some time to make up my mind and yours. Yes! Oh, that's, that is very fast. A oh, very fast, yes. Uh, uh, Perhaps I answer him too quickly, and that scared him. But what else could I do? I don't want to give either of us time to think too much about it and just give up. Slowly, the surprise in his eyes fades into a smile. Yeah, I was right. About what? Your eyes always give me the right answer. The relief smile on his lips make my heart skip a bit. The conversation ended there, along with the doubts following us in the last few days. All that is left now is the wait, as we've been doing for a while. The last 24 hours felt like days. The whole night I kept thinking about what his house is like. What is his going to tell me? But especially, am I ready to hear it? This might be the last step to reaching our conclusion, but it also may be a reason to change everything. Is this the change in our future we were so afraid of? Standing in front of the address he gave me yesterday, I think about it one last time. Turning back or knocking at the door, either way, I will be making a decision. I can't escape this moment. Now I understand why he was so confused that night. Fate is scary because it's inevitable. I close my eyes and take a deep breath. Knocking on the door, I take a step back to wait. It takes a few minutes, but soon the door opens, showing a surprised face behind it. It sounds cliche, but for a moment it was like time had stopped for us. Maybe it's because we're not awake, but seeing him there, standing in front of me, makes me free. Free? Makes me free to feel anything. He is not wearing that tired expression. It's the actual face, and he looks younger somehow. Slowly, I see his shoulder relaxing and his smile turning bright, soft and fresh as I have ever seen before. It almost feels like he just realized what's going to happen, and he is confident about it. Now I'm not so scared to move forward into it. Taking a step to the side, he waves his hand in the air, motioning for me to walk inside. 
Right at the entrance, I faced my first challenge, a long corridor leading into a distant room. At that moment, I knew that everything could go wrong. Silence will reveal, nervousness will overwhelm me, and our mood will get too weird for us to talk normally. I just knew it. I was sure it was going to happen. However, why I am thinking about it and starting to panic inside my head, Ray is leading the way into the living room. Before I knew it, we are both standing here, and all the things that made me so apprehensive didn't even have time to come true. As soon as we arrive in the living room, my eyes are caught in bright curiosity. Oh, what? what that's an that's a interesting plant over there. It looks like a mushroom. The first thing I see is the white windows covering one side of the walls. There are no curtains, and the glass is clear enough to let in all the light. It's beautiful to see the sunlight bathing his furniture, bringing along with it fresh air and clarity to our eyes. Another thing that catches my eye is the room colors. It's a morbid range that goes from grey to green. A cool tone embraces the environment and fits Ray so well. He doesn't have much furniture to show off, and the decoration is simple, but every detail stands out with a strong personality. I know he said he has a greenhouse, but somehow, that alone didn't prepare me to see such a bright place. So, this is my house. Emperor's like I've ever seen before. Ray talks for the first time, stretching his arms in the center of the room. I don't know if it's me or if he isn't used to bringing people here, but for some reason, he is acting differently. His eyes don't carry the usual tired looks, and his smile is far from lazy. He's excited. I can tell by the way he moves his body. But he is also nervous. At least, that's what his shaky smile is giving me. I can't deny I'm surprised by how jovial he looks today. This is new, and I'm happy to see it. Maybe he's uh, excited to see you, Anna. <laughs> Was it hard to find a place? Not really. I'm late because I was walking too slowly. The weather is so good I wanted to take some time to enjoy it on my way. And I was nervous to see you. Well, feel free to walk around. Just be careful with the stuff on the shops. Thank you. As soon as he gives the warning, my curious eyes turn toward the shops. On his wall, I find tons of books and many research specimens in jars. If I saw it in someone else's house, I might be surprised. But coming from Ray, I think this is very much like him. I won't lie, I'm surprised by the bright colors. Don't tell me you were expecting me to live in a dark place built with those books. Uh, what well, for you? No, eh. <laughs> but I thought you didn't like sunlight that much since you spent all your time inside your office. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. But it's quite the opposite. Whenever I'm home, I try to spend most of my time in the greenhouse. That's good. Talking about it, would you like to see it? Yes. Excited, I agree to go, not minding if it is too soon or not. Ray giggle, turning and leading the way to the back of the kitchen where a wooden door always opened. Just a few steps and we're at the door. Ray gives me room to walk in before him. At the time, I thought he did it out of bonanness. But later, I realized he only wanted to see my reaction better. Well, I'm sure I gave him exactly what he wanted, and I'm not mad about it. Ooh, that's a really nice greenhouse, actually. Wow, very cozy. 
The first step inside the greenhouse makes me believe I walk through a bottle straight to the fairy world. Flowers of different colors, sizes, and species. Insects stroll around leaves, and the sunlight reflects sparks on water droplets. Delighted by the moment, I take short steps across the stone floor. Okay, let me check. Ooh. Both the ceiling and the walls are made of glass. It helps to create the perfect illusion that we are already outside. Aside from all the natural structures, there is also a special corner made for resting. I can picture him sitting on the armchair, drinking coffee while he watches the birds outside. It's beautiful and fresh, and it smells like roses. I haven't seen so many flowers in a single place like this in a long time. To be honest, I haven't seen so much color in a long time. I find myself open mouth, spinning in the same spot, trying to see all this place has to offer. Mr. Fox, this is... Wait, don't say it yet. Stopping me. He walks through a doorway in the corner with no explanation. Curious, I wait without taking my eyes off the spot. Suddenly, I hear a noise that forces me to take a step forward wordly. Before I can make it to the third step, I'm surprised by a rainbow cloud entering the room. In a matter of moments, the entire room fills up with the sound of wings and the exuberant colors in every corner. It's the butterflies he told me about. I couldn't express myself before, but seeing the different specimens dancing around me now makes it even more difficult. My eyes are glistering, blessed to be surrounded by beauty. Welcome to my private paradise. Ray whispers beside me. With so much happening, I'm not even surprised I didn't see him approaching me. I turn around, still dumbfounded. My heart melts when I see his trolley reads on me. Mr. Fox, you did such a fantastic job here. This place is beautiful. Thank you. These butterflies. Did you raise them by yourself? Yes, they were the reason I skipped work that day. What? No way. Yes, the caterpillars were shot to be that day, and I couldn't miss it. What kind of father would I be if I wasn't around to welcome my child? He laughs at his own comparison, though that doesn't change what he means. The way he talks about insects carries an innocent, childlike glee, but it is also responsible and caring like a parent. It's the kind of feeling that makes my heart happy. I'm just disappointed I didn't make it on time with you. What do you mean? The metamorphosis. I wish you were here to see it. I thought it would happen today, but they were faster last night. He talks about it as if it wasn't a big deal, and I wish my heart would feel the same. I wish his caring wishes didn't make me blush and wake butterflies inside me too. I look at him. He is watching the greenhouse. He truly looks so different today. Something lying down last eerie of his surroundings. I'm glad I could make it to see them anyway. He looks at me and smiles. As I say, that's something you would say. And my smile responds with, because that's how I am when I am with you. What are you going to do with them? Hmm, usually I keep them for recordings and trying new breedings. But I have decided to set them free tomorrow morning. The way he talks about it makes it clear how much he cares about the butterflies. It's not just a weekend's hobby. It is something important to him that holds impact on his surroundings. Nani, I turn around. There are so many things to see and talk about that I don't even know where to start. Suddenly, my gaze lands on a large space in the corner where an unusual blue flower is growing. 
You are not only raised in butterflies. Are you planting something here? Yes, it's our hyacinthus. My second try with it, to be honest. Oh, they are tricky because of the weather, right? Yes, but I'm not giving up on it. Initially, I plan to plant some flowers in the garden, but I don't think it would be safe here. So I decided to keep this one for now. Good choice. Weather and other conditions are important, but roots are a much bigger problem than most people recognize when it comes to plants. It's fun to be able to talk about this kind of subject with someone who has the same interests. I think that's what makes us forget about the rest of the world and just talk about it. We're talking about flowers, insects, gardens, and the creatures that live around us all day long, and we don't even see. I didn't expect to laugh and be astonished by such topics, but I did, and it was fun. For the rest of the morning, that's what we did. After a long afternoon talking of flowers and annoying bugs, we decided to walk inside. Ray goes to the kitchen to make tea while I wait in the living room. I didn't expect today we to be so much fun. All the fears surrounding my heart when I arrived were all left outside the house. Being next to him is the right thing to do, no matter how wrong it sounds. I hear footsteps approaching. My body stiffens, reminding me where I am. Slowly, he places the milks on the coffee table and gently sits down on the couch next to me. He looks at me and smiles. My face turns red thanks to the short distance between us, but my heart is happy for that very reason. Oh my! I didn't say it before, but I'm glad you decided to come. It has been a long time since I had so much fun here. He says that smiling, but listening to his voice, I hear a hint of sadness carrying his words. The butterflies in my stomach high. From the shadows, trouble thoughts lurk around. Somehow, it feels like he did everything to make this day perfect as if that's what he wants his last memory of us to be. He sounds like a goodbye. Ray takes a long breath, turning to the mug in front of him. Those medicines were for a friend of mine. Finally, he lets out the words he's been holding back for so long. As much as I wanted to know about it, as much as I wanted to be closer to him, at this moment, I swear I wanted to make him stop more than anything. I am afraid of what this will cost. However, the sadness in his eyes didn't let me do anything against it. It happened years ago when Lars, Thomas, and I were still going to college. There was this bright, cheerful girl who started to walk with us. She was more stubborn than Lars and more caring than Thomas. The type of girl that stands in your way and you can only choose to love her or hate her. And I guess I loved her way too much. A humorless, nostalgic laugh fills the little space between us. The man beside me shows us face, torn between past and present. But I wasn't the only one. Lars was interested in her too. A bit of feeling says through his words. My heart suddenly loses its color. Memories of the conversation I had with Hansen in the lounge make me aware of the situation again. It is funny to think about it. We have always been rivals, so it was kind of meant to happen. But this time, we couldn't prove he was the best with a simple score. This time was about a girl's heart. He smiles, shaking his head. I bet right now, several vast disputes are replaying behind his eyes. 
childish thought from young people who think they're going to live forever. One day, the three of us went out for a walk. I was planning to ask her out and put an end to this. But guess who had the same plan? Heh. <laughs> people say rivals think alike. <laughs> they aren't wrong. Ray smiles at me, honest and affectionate. Something you only show when you still cherish something. Then he turns forward. His countenance becomes serious and bell. I fear I am not prepared for what is coming after that. It was a dark night and we started a fight. Someone pushed someone. Someone screamed. Someone fell. The words die on my lips. My breath stops in my lungs. The atmosphere around us becomes dark. The sun coming through the window weakens its light on us. Is this the lion's den Mr. Hansen told me? The next day she was in a hospital bed. She fell from the cliff and hit her head. A few days later, we found out the damage has injured her optic nerve. My heart stops for an instant. Suddenly, I understand the weight on his back. I understand the pain, and I understand the loneliness. I remember the guilty turning into a rage and making me fight lairs to the point both of us were bleeding. I wanted someone to blame for that because I didn't want to carry it by myself. Things could get way worse if Thomas were around. His voice tumbles between sadness and regret. What impresses me is that he is not holding back. He is simply telling me and afraid to see the memories. I think holding on to this for so long is forcing him to come out all at once now. We used to visit her in the hospital every day. And every time, she would beg us not to blame ourselves. It was driving me insane. I wanted her to hate me, you know. It would be easier to bear it. He speaks by biting his teeth. The feelings of an old time are still alive. Somehow, Lawrence found forgiveness, and they were able to be friends again. I think that's why we can't stand each other. He moved on while I'm still here trying to undo what happened. That's why you needed the meds. Yes. What were you trying to do with it? It was for research. I am trying to find a way to cure her. I could say a thousand things about the consequences of that. I could even call him inconsequential and clueless, but I didn't have the heart to do it. Seeing how much pain has gotten into his heart to the point of resorting to it makes me want to embrace that suffering. When I told Lars about it, he punched me. Can't you see we have ruined her life enough? He told me to stop so many times before giving up on me. He shakes his head, letting out a long, noisy sigh. He can't take it anymore. He can't take himself anymore. She is a married woman now. A mother living her best life. She didn't let any of that stop her from loving her life. And I am here, still trying. Still failing, still locked inside a room trying to stop it all. He bites every word angrily as he laughs humorlessly. I know he didn't do the right thing, but I don't want to be an accomplice in his martyrdom now. I didn't come here to judge. Without thinking about consequences, I take his hand. His exhausted gaze turns to me, showing no surprise. He breathes slowly, taking his time to absorb the old feelings before sharing the current ones. She is doing well, Hannah, but I only realized that after you came into my life. His words became affectionate again. My eyes meet his in surprise to hear it. In his saddened face, I find a golden light. Every time I was searching for something or blending my next stop, 
You would show up and make me hold back. That night in the car, I had the medicines in my bag and I was planning to test it. But when I got home, I threw it away. As I remember in that moment, his eyes landed on an empty garbage can in the corner. A disbelieving smile crosses his lips. My heart beats confusedly in my chest. Calmly, he turns to me and flashes me that lazy smile I know so well. Suddenly, everything becomes clear. You and your will of fate. He speaks with a chuckle between his breathing. Without asking permission, he leans closer, touching my face gently with his fingertips. That night in my car, I wanted you more than I wanted to erase me. Instinctively, I take his hand in mine, entwining our fingers in a strong grip. That gentle touch is enough to make him sigh softly. My body pulls closer, his nose touches mine, his eyes follow my lips. I watch you, and I don't want to deny this feeling now. Then don't do it. And just let me help you forget the pain for a moment. Inconsequential words came out on the spur of the moment, out of a mutual feeling. I know this is a very heartfelt situation, but that's um, that's kind of spicy there. Very spicy. Looking into his eyes, I feel his fingers trail down my breast to my elbow before finally reaching my waist. His velvet touch sends shivers running through my body, and yet we don't avert our eyes. He is embracing this moment in my memories before he can do it on my body. Uh, oh, okay. Slowly but violently, his hands move down my body, pulling me closer and under him. Oh my, oh my, oh my. His fingers tap on my clothes from my Randa's neck, ruffling his hair. Oh, oh, um, God? 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 Uh, oh. I, I hope it, it's just kissing and not something more. I mean, I would love to read that, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure this is like 17 plus and not 18 plus. <laughs> At the moment our lips touched, there was no turning back. We will make love until it is the only thing we feel. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I mean, no. Uh, 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 it's nothing very specific, but oh my god, it's Okay, okay. Okay. When I wake up, it's already morning. I stretch my body under bed. A soft scent of cologne that isn't mine reaches my nostril. Okay, okay, uh, I guess. Oh, you had a lot of fun that night. Wink, wink, nut, nut. <laughs> Too fast. Memories from last night hit my mind before my eyes are falling open. Hungry kisses wetting my skin, strong hands rubbing my legs, and the sweet scent rubbing inside me. Oh, um, um, um. <laughs> Ahem, ahem, <laughs> What do you mean the sweet side rub it inside me? Slowly, I set up, hugging my naked body under the sheets. Okay, this is very obvious, guys. Oh my goodness. I mean, uh, I guess the way is worth it, but oh my god. I look down at my body. Red marks are tattooed on my skin like roof out on it. We went from the couch to his bed like two insatiable animals. Oh my god. 
When I look out the window, seeing this morning's gentle sunshine, I can hardly believe what happened between us hours ago. Thinking about it, I turn to his side of the bed. The excited joy in my chest dies down when I notice he is nowhere near. It's nothing out of the ordinary. However, the decisions made last night made me wonder how much it would affect the outcome. We didn't do anything wrong, but we did it in the heat of the moment, putting all our feelings aside for our desires. Now I am wondering if this is going to cause another spin in the wheel. Taking a deep breath, I look for my clothes on the floor before moving out to buy the shoes. Walking to the living room, I'm caught by surprise to see Ray sitting on the couch. He is wearing only a white coat and pants. There is a cup of coffee on the table and a puzzled expression on his face. My heart melts in my chest from where I stand. It feels like we are living together already. It feels fitting and it hurts to think I may be wrong. Morning. Oh, good morning. Did I wake you? No. Then what are you doing here? You should rest a little longer. I wasn't sure if I should stay there without you. Oh. He seems to understand what my confused tone means. Feeling guilty, he stretches the back of his head, giving me an awkward smile. Sorry about it. I should have waited until you were awake. Well, at least he's talking to me normally and hasn't sent me away. Taking that as a good sign, I approach him, leaning over the couch. Curious to know what he is looking at, I cast my eyes down, finding his phone in his hand. What are you doing? My voice attracts his attention once again. This time, he looks at me hesitantly. I almost see the words stuck on the tip of his tongue. I turn my head to the left as the question mark weighs down on the top of my head. After everything that's happened, I can't imagine what could be holding him back from talking to me. Is her number? The answer came like a harsh shake on my shoulder. Last night, as he was telling me about his story, I thought about suggesting he talk to her. I just didn't expect him to do it so fast. So must gave it to me some months ago. He said I should finish the story someday. His voice disturbs. It looks like he's still not quite sure what he's doing, but he wants to do it anyway. I think spending so much time making decisions alone made him insecure about his future. At first, this thing sounded rushed and a little forced to me, but listening to him talk about it, I realized he's had this intention for a long time. He just didn't know how to do it. Or at least, not do this alone. Without asking permission, I take one of his hands in mine. He looked at me, confused, asking for help. You know, your wings are too beautiful to be stuck inside this cocoon forever. Uh, last night I saw what the pain has cost you. I don't like it, and I know you don't like it too. If you are ready to let go of your past, then do this. Let's release the butterflies together like you wish to. He looks at me for a few more moments before making a single move. I see in his eyes both excitement and fear, the euphoria of frightening feelings. You are really no joke, miss. My hand rests on his shoulder. His trembling fingers touch the screen opening the contact. Okay, I'm going to text her now. The wheel of fate is about to turn once more. I know this isn't going to be easy, but I am staying here. And when the pain hits him, I will be the one to hold him as he did to me. Woo! Okay, this is guaranteed a romantic ending. Guaranteed. 
because uh, everything is clear here and uh, obvious romance and uh, we see the spicy woohoo at the end of that and uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's any update for that part on Otto's route or is it just Mr. Ray's route that we have this woohoo thing here so uh, <laughs> oh my god it's very nice though it's not very uh, explicit, but uh, mentioning a bit. Very obvious mentioning a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess the slow pace is worth it because um, the Anna's are explosive color, like a lot of explosive colors. Yes. The sky is blue, the sun is hot. And the flowers around me make me feel like it's summer morning. It's a beautiful day, and luckily, this is also my day off. But unexpectedly, I'm not at home making papers and reading notes. Yesterday, when I was talking to Ray in his office, he mentioned his new shipping coming. That reminded me of the last time when he took the day off, and it stirred the teacher's feelings in the lounge. Thinking about it, I asked him to let me take it for him. He was happy to agree with it, and I am glad to be here again now. To be honest, I have been coming here quite often lately. Sometimes I come here to help him record any news on his insects, and sometimes it's only to keep him company. But today is the first time I'm here by myself. It's a bit strange, but it doesn't feel uncomfortable anymore. I feel happy here. His shipping arrived some hours ago. This means my job is done here, and I should go home. However, I can't bring myself to do it without watering his plants. They are having a hard time with this weather too. It's a small kindness on my part that I'm sure will do good for all of us. With his watering can, I lean closer to the vases. Paying attention to which plants I shouldn't go closer to. There are some caterpillars here too. Oh, they are eating. Hmm. It's so cute. Kneeling closer, I watch the bugs move thousands of feet, leaving small bites behind. The yellow speckles all over the bodies usually look poisonous, and sometimes they are. Several species of caterpillars are known for being dangerous to living creatures, including humans, which is not the case here. This little friend means no harm to me, but it sure can be a problem for the plant. Such mythical creatures, happy to have encountered a new friend, I take a step back. I don't want to meddle with it without raise approval. Smiling. I turn around to continue with my watering work. Thinking about Ray, it's been a while since what happened that day, but our lives haven't been much different. It's not what I expected when he sent that text. That day was suffocating, to say the least. When he sent the text, she answered right away. It didn't give him time to process nor give me a chance to support him. It was a mess, but when I saw the text, I knew it would be all right. She was surprised to hear from him, but she was also happy to know he didn't forget her. I could take glimpses of his face while they were talking. It was a mix of longing for a friendship he treasured and the pain of accepting all he did. In the end, they decided to meet up and talk more. I didn't go with him because I knew it was personal. But that didn't stop him from telling all the details when he got home. He called me and told me everything. His voice joked in tears and smiles. This was new for me, both the situation and the feelings. We released the butterflies that day and finally found a cure for the past. Now he doesn't stay overnight at work like he used to, and we started to meet more often, but we still don't talk about that night. I knew he was going through a lot, so I decided not to push it, but I was a bit disappointed. Maybe because I want an answer, 
And I want to know if that is all we would ever do. I want to know if we have a chance to make it again while knowing how I feel. A long silence gives my love loudly as I think about such tiring things. Am I making you work too hard? A surprise voice calls me from behind. I turn around just as quickly as my heart skips a beat. I almost shout when I see Ray standing at the door with a smile in his eyes. Eh? What are you doing here? Shouldn't you still be at work? I should, but the kids are leaving early today. I think there's an event happening tomorrow. And the teachers want to tidy up the rooms before it. Oh, I didn't hear about it. No one did, apparently. He doesn't need to go deep into an explanation for me to know this is another last-minute plan from Thomas. Laughing and shaking my head, Rhea walks closer to me. So, since I didn't have anything to do there, I decided to come home. I had a feeling I would find you here. Hmm, you sound like you wanted to see me. He stops a few steps aside, a playful smile rests on his lips. That's enough to make my heart flutter. How are things here? Good, the shipping came early. Now I am watering your plants. You didn't have to. It's alright, I love doing it. And I like to spend my time watching your greenhouse. Early the greenhouse. Well, the words come out like a whisper. The smile cross on his face makes a giggle sound too soft. He knows how to play with my heart in a way I feel safe and joyful. Pushing it aside, I turn my face to the flowers as I try to steady my heartbeat. How was it at work? Nothing out of usual. Some kids were sick from eating too much. Some were exhausting after cancer classes, and some were skipping classes in my room. The usual is good too. Right. Walking a little more, he sits in the armchair, taking a long breath as I water the plants on the other side. It is strange how much it feels like home when he is around. Oh, I almost forgot. Thomas told me Eric is no longer a part of the school. Do you know something about that? Uh, no. Actually, I do. After that day of spying on Eric, Mr. Hansen found out about his plan. He didn't tell me everything, but he told me it was dark enough to get everyone in danger. So instead of waiting for hell to break loose, he took action. Mr. Hansen and Thomas cornered Eric the other night and didn't let go until he finally admitted what he was doing. I know all that, but Mr. Hansen has forbidden me from telling it to Ray. He said it wasn't worth it because it would ruin what I was working so hard to get. Hannah? Oh, sorry, I got lost in my task. What were you saying? I was saying, would you like to stay for dinner? Eh? Are you sure? Yeah, there is something I would like to talk about with you. His motivation behind the invitation is what put my heart in a racing mood. However, the sound of his voice going from soft to joyful too fast makes me blessed for it. At least I know he is not planning to talk about something bad. But I don't think I can wait until dinner for that now. You can talk to me now, you know. I say that placing the water can on the table. I didn't want to rush him, but I wanted him to know that I am interested in hearing whatever he has to say. He looks at me, sucking the air through his teeth, upset like his plan has been ruined. But then, he turns around, taking his time to look at his own place. 
It's not what I wanted, but it doesn't sound so bad too. Pushing his body up, Ray stands with an expression that conveys trivial curiosity. Now I am more confused than before. I think here is a good place to do it. What do you mean? I mean, do you want to start a live with me? I'm glad I'm not holding anything now. Otherwise, I would have dropped it and make a mess. Oh, is this a proposal? Wait, you guys have a date? Well, I mean, you guys meet up and stuff, but isn't it like... They're already confirmed dating? Or is it just like... Understanding through a telepathy or something? Why am I missing anything here? But why is it we... What, why do we have proposal here? That sounds a lot like a proposal. For a second, silence is the only thing I hear. In my head, I keep repeating. Did I hear it right? I see the smug look on his face softening, and soon I realize he is holding my hands. I did not hear it wrong. Ray alert! I did not hear it wrong! I said it before. I don't want to just go out with you. I don't want one nice stand. I want to be with you. And I wanted to ask you that day, but things got out of hand. Scratching the back of his neck, he mutters the words, a little embarrassed of himself. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. He looks sweet. And it is too much for my heart to take right now. All this time, he was really the same as me. And all this time, he was trying to fix things so we could be together. All this time, since my very first day, he has been looking after me. My heart melts. I move closer with tears in my eyes. You gave me options to be better. And thanks to that, I saw a future in your eyes. So, do you want to make a new future with me? I don't think I need to answer it. It's all over my face already. But I really want to hear myself saying it. Yes! His expression was stable and peaceful all the time. But when he heard my answer, I saw his shoulder trembling and his eyes lighting. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, he's flushing too. He was nervous. He was wishing for it just as much as I was. He takes my hand to his smile and softly places a kiss on my fingers. I will love you right. He doesn't need to say that. Every day since I started working, there was not a single day I didn't feel loved by him. But now, we can make it official and go deeper into it. For the first time, I'm not scared of giving it a try. And I think it is because I found who I have been looking for since the start. Damn! That's, that's a really nice ending actually. Wow, wait, wow, wait. I, I mean, um, the other brown house have Especially Mr. Hanson's route is kind of spicy of the other route, but I never thought that we would see more spice, more, much more spice. Because older men are like that, huh? The older the men, the more spicy it is. And the routes, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, 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 it was so. It was so un unexpected. I, I thought it was supposed to be just kisses, like deep kisses. That point, but not the point of woohoo! And, and that. Ooh. <laughs> anyway, but, but to the topic at hand, this about uh, the ending. Actually, have you know, an explanation for everything now. So you can say there's spies at the end of there's route is like a reward after us like moving so slowly at time with the teasing with the talking and a lot of mysteries about mr fox still unanswered 
We reached the end. We found another answer. It was satisfactory. Everything was ended well. Mr. Fox had let go of his past. We got a Hannah got a boyfriend and now a husband. Yay! Though I guess they're kind of skipping the part of like dating, asking for a date. Boyfriend, girlfriend thing, and jump right into the let's make a love together. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the process is fast, but the official part of like asking is kind of vague until the part when he actually officially asks about let's make a love together. Maybe they won't be married after that kind of proposal, like profession, but. Um, I guess it's more of like, uh, will you will you be my boyfriend girlfriend? Will you uh, date me with the purpose of getting married in the future or starting a family in the future kind of stuff? But uh, it, it was new. It was kind of different from the other rounds, and I kind of really like it too. I guess I was a bias towards Mr. Ray Fox, so. Uh, <laughs> So um, maybe it's because the crowd is too fresh in my mind. I really, really like Mr. Fox Brown very, very much. I'm sorry, Mr. Hanson. Mr. Ray Fox has got the round. So um, I guess if um, I am fine with being things being a bit slow, I guess because. Come on, the, the ending was worth it. It was worth it. It was so. It was burning. It was passionate. Yes. So um, yeah. Anyway, uh, we still have some more rounds to go. So currently, the the top contender is Mr. Ray Fox. Currently, it might change in the future. So overall, the route was pretty good. It's a bit longer than I expected. Like in comparison with other rounds, I think this one is much much longer. Especially there's a clear difference between the friendship ending and the romantic ending. So that's a real real new to me. So next route it will be at an attempt to find the secret route of whoever that is. I'm. I have a suspicion, but I'm not sure if that is the person I think it is. So, stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next playthrough of Teachers with Love and Passion. Bye bye.